Over 2,000 years ago, in the town of Bethlehem, angels began to sing. There were shepherds in the fields that night, and they looked up and saw all of heaven praising God. Glory, glory in the highest, and peace on earth to whom his favor rests. The angels sang and the shepherds wondered, who could this be about? So they searched and they found. They saw a baby born in a barn, wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. Could it be that this is who the angels were singing of? But why would such a special child be born in a barn? Maybe it was to show us humility. Maybe it was to show us that he came to serve. Maybe it was to show the shepherds that even they were loved by God, regardless of their day jobs. Or maybe it was to show them that even he was a shepherd, the great shepherd. He was the one who would lead the flock. He was the one who would save the people. He was the one who would shut the mouth of the lions. He was the one who would be crowned king over all creation. He is the Lamb of God. He is the Word of Life. He is Emmanuel, God among us. And His name is Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God, the King of all. Praise the Lord, everyone. That's one way to get everything started. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Good to be back in the house of the Lord today to worship the Lord. And there's only one way to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Amen? Amen. All right, we're going to do Shout to the Lord. Now, we don't have a soundtrack for this, so we're going to have to do it with no music. And we got Justin playing the drums. Yeah, so we're just going to go ahead and we're going to do this song, Shout to the Lord. My Jesus, my Savior, for there is none like you all of my days. I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. Oh, 
chains, right? And that's Jesus. Hallelujah. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you're out there on live stream today, I'm here to tell you that Jesus can break the chains. If you're bound and you need deliverance, you need set free, call upon the name of the Lord and you will be. There's no if, there's no ands about it. You will be saved. Amen. Especially if you pray and you mean it from your heart. Amen. Then Jesus Christ will be the Lord of your life. All right, let's do Chain Breaker. Sorry, it's too late. When, when is it? When do I come in? Okay. <clears throat> Let's do it again. I'm sorry I messed it up. You've been walking the same old road for miles and miles. You've been listening to the same old voice tell the same old lies. You've been crying home inside there's a better life there's a better life you got pain he's a pain taker if you feel lost he's a way maker you need freedom for saving he's a prison shaking savior you got chains There's a better life, church. There's a better life, sing. You got pain. He's a pain taker. You feel lost. He's a way maker. You need freedom for saving. He's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. Somebody testify. If you believe it, you receive it. You can feel it. Somebody testify, testify. You believe it, you receive it. You can feel it. Somebody testify. You got pain. He's a pain taker. You feel lost. He's a way maker. You need freedom for saving. He's a prison shaking savior. You got chains. He's a chain breaker. You need freedom for saving. He's a prison shaking savior. You got chains. Oh, yes, he is. Hallelujah. He is a 
chain breaker. Hallelujah. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, we're going to do always enough. And we can never, ever get enough of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm glad that he said in his word that he would never leave us. Thank God he would never forsake us. Because I'll tell you what, if I didn't have Jesus, I don't know what I'd do. I don't know how the world does it. I really don't. Especially in the times that we're living in today. I don't know how they, how they do it. But I'm just glad I got, that's right, Merlene, I got Jesus to lean on. Praise God. All right, let's do this song, Always Enough.
Because it's the, it's the Lord's birth, and you can feel a difference in the air. You can feel it, praise God. Amen. And just like the shepherds went, they said, God, go tell it on the mountain. And we're going to tell it on the mountain today, praise God. Thank you, Jesus, that Jesus Christ is Lord. We do not have a soundtrack for this. So we're going to have to do it without music. Marianne's not able to be here. 
I wish she was because she played this on the piano before. Well, we're going to have to do it without music. We miss you, Mary Ann. Yes, Mary Ann, we sure do miss you. We miss you. Praise God. We love you too, honey. You, you and Jim. Yeah, we miss you both. Praise God. But sometimes things happen, you can't do nothing about it, the circumstances. So just keep praying for her husband, Jim. He needs, he needs our prayers today. All right, let me go ahead and take me a little drink. And then we'll go ahead and go tell it on the mountain. All right, here we go. Go tell it on the mountain. Over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain. Jesus Christ is born. Sing it again. Go tell it on the mountain. Over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain. Jesus Christ is born. The shepherds kept their watching over silent flocks by night. Behold, who
destroying something is to allow sin in, in our lives. Amen. In, in our place of work, in our church, wherever. When we allow sin to come in, then it destroys. And the shedding of blood is what redeems. <clears throat> now, whenever you look at that, um, whenever you see that and the sin came in, then God had to come in and do something. Even though he was angry with them because they did sin, and even though that he gets angry when we sin, that blood is the one that covers it. Amen. And so in, in the uh, third chapter of Genesis, in the 21st verse, it said, unto Adam, <clears throat> he said unto Adam also, and to his wife, said to both of them, did the Lord, <clears throat> excuse me, did the Lord make go coats of skin? He immediately had to shed blood to cover the sin. So he shed the blood of the goat or of the lamb or the T-Rex, whatever was there at that time. Um, he had to cover them. They had to have skin to cover them. Because at this time, at this time of their life, they were in a spiritual bubble. They, had, they could not see themselves as sin or as naked. Now they're naked as jaybirds, and they tried to cover themselves with fig leaves. That didn't work. Why? Because God is the provider. So he provided love when he killed this thing. That was the first shedding of the blood. But they didn't stop there. You remember Cain and Abel? Yeah. And remember the blood cried out? You see, blood is life. 
But when we allow, when we don't walk in love, then we're allowing the devil in. And see, when they when they went ahead and they took a hold and they went ahead <clears throat> and they ate of the forbidden fruit, sin came in. And when we don't walk in love, sin comes in. And when sin comes in, sin is for one purpose, and that's to destroy you and the people around you. I don't really... you, Tiffany. You just read part of the message. <laughs> That's pretty good. It popped up, and I was going to read it later. <laughs> so we have a pop-up quiz uh, thing in the church. Now, one day we had one when the phone went off, and it, yeah. it tried to outdo me. And now Tiffany's come. She's trying to, yeah. But this is a, this right here is a message on love, because this is the first of December. All right, and this is the month of love. And everybody walks in love, but more in this month than any other month, which is really wrong. You've got 11 other months. You ought to be walking in love, too. Amen. But this is the month you walk in love because you expect everyone to give you a present. <laughs> there is a point to why we walk in love this month. Okay, let's go, since Tiffany's already said that one. <clears throat> we're going to go to, which I think and we love, is John 3.16. So go with me to John 3.16. And let's I'm see. Sorry, that's it. No, you're not, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're just trying to outdo me this morning here, Tiff. That's all. No, no, no. <laughs> Joe, 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 I'm just messing with you, Tiff. I'm just messing with you. John 3.16. Now, we all know this. This is a very familiar verse. Everyone should know John 3.16. And the very thing it says, it says... Um, I'm going to read 14 because this is important. And it says, And Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Now that right there, remember he was in the, he was in the wilderness, Moses was in the wilderness, and there was so much, uh, so much sin that they put a snake on, the cross, on a pole and put it up. And when they did, and that everyone that looked upon that snake, everyone that looked upon that snake was healed. Well, see, it's representing everyone that lives up on, looks up on Christ is healed. It's delivered. You said your salvation. And then 15 said, And whatsoever and whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Eternal life. It says eternal life. But have ever, <clears throat> eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have an everlasting life. Yes. Now, when you look at that, it's a whosoever thing. It's a whosoever. Mm -hmm. Anybody can be born again. Yes. Anybody can believe in God. Anybody can be, you know, Jesus was the son of God. Mm -hmm. The only son of God. Mm -hmm. Until he went to the cross yeah. and came up. When he came up out of hell, when he said, all power has been given to me, both in heaven and earth. When he started talking like that, and he said, now you become sons and daughters. Why? Because he was the only son. See, it was one seed. That's all it was, was one seed. And one seed produced everyone that is born again. That's what it, that's this, and this is love. And it says, it says, and for God so loved the world that he so loved everybody in the world. He does not dis discriminate against anybody. Right. He's loved to anybody. Anybody can be born again and wants to be. Amen. All you got to do is ask for forgiveness. And so when we see all this, and it says, um, 
But 17 says, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn it, to condemn the world, but that the world by, through him might be saved. saved. Yes. See, he sent his Son, his only begotten Son, into the world so that the world itself could be born again, filled with the Spirit of God. So when we look at this, if you're not walking in love, forget it. Forget it. Amen. Because love conquers a multitude of sin, and we're going to see that. But love is the thing. If you're not walking in love, you can forget it. You say, well, I don't really like that person. That's, no, that's, that's your problem. And it becomes a big problem. Because if you don't love them, how can God love you? You have to walk. You have to walk. You say, "Well, I don't agree with him." It don't make a difference whether you agree with him or not. Amen. It has, and that has nothing to do with that. What it has to do with? Do you love God? Yes. And if you love God, you're going to agree with God. Amen. And when you agree with God, then you're you're in the right position. Yes. So love conquers a multitude. She just read that to us. And so we're going to read it again because, see, I'm not going to let you outdo me. <laughs> All right. So we got that. Do we make that clear there? Okay. Let's let's go to let's go to First uh, John one six. I'm just messing with you, Tim. Uh, Tip, I'm just messing with you. First John. There's little John clear in the back here. <clears throat> So many pins in here. First John, and it is starting with the sixth verse. First John, first chapter. If you, if we say that we have fellowship with Him and we walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. Now it says we have fellowship. Does it say that we have that we are totally and completely in agreement? No, it don't say that. It says you have fellowship with them. You, you have the fellowship, the fellowship, the, the talking, the fellowship, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. You're cleansed. When you have fellowship, when you're walking with one another, when you love one another, you're walking in the love of God, you will have fellowship. It does not say, the Bible tells you there that we are knitted together in love. Amen. We're knitted together. And anybody who knits, Mary knits, Mary sells, she knits, you know you knit a tight knit. Or you make a loose knit. Well, if you make a loose knit, you have holes in it. And if you, have a, if you have holes in your love, you're not going to walk in love. You're going to allow the world to come in. And the world will intervene in that it just weave its well, way right into your heart. And when it intervenes into your heart, then it's going to come out of your mouth. Because the Word of God says, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth will speak. So when you don't have love in your heart, and you have dissension in your heart, oh, I don't care whether it's with your husband, your wife, or a workplace, or a church, or wherever. When you have that in your heart, it's going to come out. Because whatever's inside of you is going to come out. Either that or it'll fester so bad in your life, it'll fester so bad that it'll be like cancer. And you will be eaten alive. And you don't even know about it. And you think you're right. We've seen that. That's it's happened a lot of times. If people will just walk in love, if they will just use that love. You know, we have a, a relationship with Israel. We love Israel. Amen. Here at Zor, we love Israel. Amen. Israel, we love Israel. <laughs> and a lot of people, the people that love Israel is what is keeping this thing together. Because when you love Israel, the Bible says if you love Israel or if you love the Jewish people, and if you want to do them harm, harm's going to come to you. But if you will keep them, he told us what he told Abraham. He said, those that love you, I will love. Those that hate you, I will hate. So we, we're, we, the ones who love Israel, are the ones that's keeping the United States intact. 
Because if they had their way, they would disannul Israel as nothing. They think Israel is not. Israel has the hand of God upon Amen. it totally. Amen. Totally. Amen. I know we have a covenant with God. We have a covenant with the Almighty God. The United States has one. It's called the Mayflower Compact. And it was done years and years ago. That covenant is still here with us. We still have it. But when you have something, you better not. You better uphold it. And by our prayers and by our walking in love, one to another, one to another, when we walk in that kind of sweet love, you don't understand. You know, a husband and wife doesn't always agree. Do I see any hands out there? <laughs> they don't. All, <laughs> they, they don't all, you don't always agree, but you still love one another. Oh, oh I see two hands up. Uh, you, you know, you, you have this. I mean, this is you don't have to uh, uh, agree with everything somebody says, but by golly, you better love them. You better love them, and you better work yourself way to do so to to. To make yourself available for anything that you can do. If you can change something, change it. I mean, I changed for years. And years. And years did I change. There was years I've changed. But you know what? It ended up being pretty good. I just got my way another way. <laughs> I just had to work around in another, just working around another way. So anyhow, we're, we're thinking about love here. We're thinking about love. Let's go to 1 Peter. We're real close to 1 Peter. Let's go to 1 Peter here. And let's see here, 1 Peter 4, 8. It says here, and above all things, above all things, mm -hmm. it's above all things, mm -hmm. above all things, have a fervent charity, which is what? Charity is love. Mm -hmm. Love among yourselves, for charity shall cover a multitude of sin. Mm -hmm. So love covers a multitude of sin. If you didn't love that husband or you didn't love that wife, I guarantee you, you'd be hurting. You'd really be hurting. But see, if you love somebody, you overlook some of the things that they do. You talk to everybody else about it, but you don't talk to them about it. You tell them, you tell somebody else, well, I ain't. Let me, I always loved it because, you know, some woman would come up and, and, and she would say all this about her husband, didn't they? But if I made mention of that husband saying something bad about that husband, she'd eat my head straight off my neck. <laughs> but see, that's, yeah, that's it. But see, that's the way that is. Or you say something, I mean, that is actually the way it is. I can say what I want to say, but don't let somebody else say it. Because let me tell you, that is war. <laughs> But see, that's, that's the way, but see that, you cover that because you love that husband, you love that one. You cover that. Even though they do irritate you, you still cover because you love them. You love them. And that's, that's a good thing. Some people choke when other people say they love them. I noticed that. Okay, let's go to, um, you know, when you look at God's love, you look at the love of God, and his love covers all of our sins, past, present, and future. Yep. And isn't that a good thing to know? Yes, it is. Amen. That's a good thing to know. <laughs> and love is what? It's kind, gentle, it's loving, it's forgiving, it's helping you. Everything love is, that's what God is. You know, we use the spirit, the, the, the spirit, the, the, love, the spirit. You know, we use love, joy, peace, gentleness. That's what God is. And that's what you and I ought to be. We ought to have that love. And when someone does something, you have, should have enough love to cover that that you don't like. Because you're supposed to have the same love that God has. And if God's love covers a multitude of sin, should our love not cover a multitude of sin? Is sin sin? Yes. Sin is sin. But 
But God's love covered that sin. And when we walk in his love, we're going to have more understanding. We're going to have more joy, more peace, more kindness. We're going to have that. And when we have that, we can I'll talk to other people and you, you know reconcile with them reconcile this love that where God moves by his spirit upon us in a way that where we have the fullness of God the joy of God the peace of God when we have that kind of love flowing from us to other people it's so much easier to live your life you say, well, they don't treat me right. It doesn't make a difference whether they treat you right. It's Amen. between you and God. Amen. It's between you and God. It's how you treat, how you're treating people and how God treats you. It's how God treats you. How does God treat you? He can't treat you any way that you're not treating somebody else. You have to treat them the way you want to be treated. The Bible says that. It's very plain. It's very plain. How do you treat somebody? Whatever you merit to somebody else, it's going to come back on you. So we can see we have a tendency to see that really good. And I think um, let's go to uh, to uh, uh, Proverbs ten. Flip back there to Proverbs. When you get to thinking about God's love, we just need to be able to, to grab a hold of the love of God. Now, like, like I said, this month is the month that we most people, you know, are more loving and they're more kind. Uh, they, they smile at you. Merry Christmas. They do all of that. So it's, it's ver, uh, Proverbs 10. And it's verse 12. Hate stirs up strife. Amen. Now that's a good one. And if you have hate, you can't have love. They do not stay in the same body. They are enemies to one another. And it says hate stirs up strife, but love cover all, not just one sin, it covers all. Did God in, in Revelations it, it talks about it talks about uh, that when when God he hated iniquity but he loved righteousness. See that's God's love. But you know when you're looking at this and you you're really looking and we look at this because it's coming up to Christmas it's coming up to the the birth of Christ. You know what did he say in Matthew? Whenever Jesus was born. The angels came, and what did they say? Peace on earth, good will towards man. Good will. Good will. The goodness of God has now come upon the earth, in the earth, around the earth. It is everywhere. Old Testament didn't have that. New Testament is what, when the peace of God came, it meant peace between God and and man, we had a peacemaker. We just sang that song, Chain Breaker. We have a peacemaker, someone who will make peace with well, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our peacemaker. The Holy Spirit comes in and he will try to tell you, he will say, that's not right. You're not doing that right. You're not saying things right. You're not acting right. Why? Because he's trying to keep us in love. So that we will cover a multitude of sin. We will not enter. See right there it says, hate stirreth up strife. The Bible says where there's envy and strife, there is confusion and every evil work. Every. Does it mean just part of the work? No. It means every evil work. And where does the work start? It starts in your mind. Amen. You start thinking things. You think, I shouldn't do that. Or you think, I wish they hadn't done that. I wish they would do this. I wish they had done that. You can do that all the time. And I'll tell you what, all you become is strife. <laughs> all that there is is strife in your heart. 
We are not, we are not perfect people. But you know, the thing of it is, you don't run from the sin, you run to God. Yeah. And you ask the Amen. Lord. And this is the, this is the whole, this is the whole thing. It says, uh, um, in the lips of him that has understanding, wisdom is found. But a rod is for the back of him that is void of understanding. Now remember, hate strikes up, hate stirs up strife, but love covers the sin. And then it says, the lips of a man, it lips of him that has understanding and wisdom to make amends quickly. Have that love of God flowing through you at all times. You know, uh, I was one of the best grudge holders there was. And boy, when Mike made me a grudge, when Mike made me mad, let me tell you, the grudge holding had begun. And I was bad. I, I'm not lying to you. You know, I got these two people that I just dearly love them. I love both of them. And, uh, but one of their sayings is, I ain't gonna lie to you. That's what, that's, they always say that. They'll be in there, but see what they mean is, they're telling me this is what has happened in there. But that, so I'm not gonna lie to you. When I held grudges, I held them and I was good at it. But see, I don't want to do that now. Because I want that love of God to fill me so that when I talk to somebody, I don't have to repent before I can go and tell you something. I want to have a heart that's filled with the love of God. And what you say or what you do is like water off a duck's back to me. I really don't care. It doesn't make any difference. As long as I am where I'm supposed to be with God, that's all that makes any difference to me. What I'm supposed to do for God is all... I can't do what somebody else does. I'm not no Joyce Myers. I'm not no Benny... Um, uh, um, yeah, I am nothing like that. I'm just me. And whenever you find where you are, you do what you're supposed to do and let God do the rest. All he's wanting is a willing vessel. Amen. So if you're a willing vessel to do what God wants you to do, that's all that makes any difference. And if you have a heart for God, you will walk in the love of God. And if you walk in the love of God, you will not be sinning. Because every time you start to sin or say or do something, right now, your, your spirit right now quickens you. And you say, no, 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 no. Don't do that. Don't say that. And don't act that way. And we say, I'll tell you one thing. I'll do what I want to do when I want to do it and how I want to do it. That is the way we do it. And that's when we're in the flesh. That's when the flesh overrules the spirit of God inside of us. And trust me, your flesh can rule, overrule you. Because it starts in your mind, and you think about things, and you get things started in your mind. Things that not even, hasn't even happened. Shoot, I'm good at that. I'm really starting to talk about myself today. I am good. I am good at that. I can think things that hasn't even happened. But you know what? I've learned. I had a dream, and boy, it was a bad dream. It wasn't really a dream. It was more like a semi-sleep thing. But I, I had a dream, and I realized in this dream that uh, what I was doing wrong. You know when God talks to you, you need to, to listen to it. You talk about repenting. Oh, geez, oh, well, yeah. Why? Because, see, I don't want my heart changed. I want to have a heart for God. And I, I want to live my life to where he can use me at any time, any place, anywhere. But whenever that mind can do things and get you to think things, and that's what he was telling me in this, in what he was showing me. He showed me. And I said, Lord, I totally and completely repent of that. And I don't ever want that. And you know, because your mind takes off. And when your mind takes off, you're not in the love of God. You're not in the love of God. When your mind, it, what I used to say, the mind just flips out here and goes someplace else. And it did. And it would. And I could do anything, anytime, anyplace, anywhere. I mean, I was just that way in my mind. See, I knew I had to bring it in. 
And he showed me that night in bed, well, one o'clock in the morning, he showed me exactly what I needed to do. And you know, all day, it was praising God for setting me free. Amen. Amen. It was setting me free. And if you've never had a mind like that, then you don't know what it's like. But see, you don't, well, you don't, these are things, nobody's perfect. And we're, we're trying, and, and we try to live our, our life with God. But listen, anytime you do something wrong, please run to God. Don't run from him. Yeah. Run to him with open arms. Say, Father, forgive me. I, I really do need <laughs> forgiveness. And that's what I did. And God's a good God. And, and you know, he, he, he listens. Yes, he, does. he hears. So we, we look at this, and when we look at it, we say to ourselves, we say, you know, God, when you do something, you do it right. I don't always do it right. But he wants to go through you like you're the only vessel that he has. You know, people that I don't think realize, you're either a vessel for God or you're a vessel for the devil. There's no other vessel. And Christians can be a vessel for the devil the same as the sinners can be if they allow themselves to be. And when we walk out of love, we're allowing ourselves to be the devil's workmanship, which we are to be God's workmanship. Amen. So when we, when we, when you do that, if people would only realize that you're only a few seconds from death, only a few seconds, that's all you are. One breath, and you're dead. Then we would walk in a love life. We would have that love life that is far more important to us than anything else. We would have we would want God to be in our life. We would want to know God more. We would have a, a relationship with Him that is far greater, far more. Why? Because you know the next time you took your breath, it would either be in heaven or in hell. And I don't think people realize hell is forever. And I don't think they believe heaven is forever. But I want to tell you something. It is. Amen. Both of them are. And so you either be a vessel for the Lord or you're going to be a vessel for the devil. And there's no other way. There is no other way. There's no other spirit. God is a spirit and the devil is a, and the devil is a dead spirit. But let me tell you, he, he just makes havoc in the homes and in the workplaces, he makes havoc. Why? Because it starts right in your mind. And you know, in, in, you know when your mind starts wondering, if you'll just say, no, Lord, I want your love to pass through me. I want your love. Now, if you say that, then see that love covers a multitude of sin. That's what it's for. So anyhow, that's what I want. That's what we're going to do. We're starting out in December. We're starting out with love. And remember that. Remember that you and I are, that's exactly what, and remember the, the verse that Tiffany read you. It's a very good tip. So we have, a, we have, a, a, we have a, a way that we're going to do everything, and the way we do it is through Christ Jesus. Alan, do you have a song you want to close with? Hey, everyone, we're going to go to 139. Thank you for watching Zor House of Prayer's live broadcast. We stream live every Sunday morning and would like to invite you to come out and be in service with us. Sunday school starts at 10 a.m. and morning worship begins at 11 a.m. We are located three and a half miles past the Morgantown Mall on 19 South. Take a right onto Sugar Grove Road for a mile and the church sits on the right with a sign at the foot of the hill. Thank you and God bless.